Hey guys, Ben here from Evolution. Hope everyone's doing well. This is the introduction video to a short web series in which I'm going to teach skills and concepts relating to mental toughness and mental preparation. The series is supposed to span over the next couple months, or at least until this quarantine's over. The goal of this series is to expand your knowledge base relating to sports psychology and mental concepts relating to sport performance, using small bits of information on a single concept over an extended period of time. So, what is mental toughness? I'm sure you've heard the term before, and maybe you have some understanding of what it is. Maybe when you hear mental toughness, you think of athletes like Tiger Woods, or Michael Jordan who scores 38 points with the flu. A guy like Patrice Bergeron who plays an entire game with a separated shoulder, a broken rib, and a punctured lung. Other times, we'll think of mental toughness from a team standpoint. Like in 2013, in Game 7 of the first round, when Boston was playing Toronto. Toronto had a 4-1 lead with 15 minutes left in the third. Boston came back, tied the game before the end of regulation, and end up winning the game and series in overtime. In a situation like this, one team gets praised for their grit, their toughness, their mental fortitude. The other team gets ridiculed for their lack of composure and blowing the lead in the most important game of the season. So, for every act of heroism in sport, there's an equal number of instances where players and teams choke under pressure. We can all recognize great moments of mental toughness in sport after they happen, but how do these athletes and teams get to be that way? If I were to ask you what percentage of sporting performance is physical versus mental, you'd likely say 15 to 90 percent is mental. But how many hours do you spend working on your mental game? We continuously train and shape our muscles to get them to work efficiently and consistently in game environments. We do countless repetitions both on the ice and in the gym so that when the pressure's on, our body doesn't fail. But our body is very rarely what breaks down in competition. The ability to train your mind to work exactly how you want it to in the most pressure-filled situations is probably the most underrated and neglected skill in sports. And the best part about exercising your mind is it takes almost no space or equipment to do so, just a sustained mental effort. So whether you're just starting your journey to mental skills training or you're trying to deepen your current mental practice, now is the perfect time to hone in on these skills. So throughout this course, we will not only talk about what mentally tough athletes are able to do, we'll talk about the attributes they have as well as the skills they possess. By the end of this series, you should have a working knowledge of what it means to be mentally tough, as well as the skills that it takes to get there. There's a fine line between being the hero and the GOAT, and whichever side you land on depends on you. I'll see you guys in the next video where we'll define mental toughness and talk about what mentally tough athletes are able to accomplish. See you there.